Welcome to Navigating by Wisdom. And how are you guys doing today? Good. Why navigating by Satnav? Getting here. Well, I think that's very wise. The, one, one of the things we're going to be exploring is the distinction between navigating in the material world, you know, traffic, uh, walking in the woods, that sort of thing, and how that can differ from and, and how, our, how the approaches and metaphors we take to that can kind of monkey with our uh, discernment of what our wisdom's guiding us to do. Because what, one of the things we tend to do is use the same metaphors that we use for the world. You know, I've got a long road ahead of me. Um, uh, it's, a bumpy, it's a bumpy road. Uh, there, there's, uh, you know, I can't see the wood for the trees. We use those kind of metaphors when we're talking about the internal world of thought and wisdom. But of course, the internal world of thought and wisdom doesn't share the same qualities as the material world. So yeah, good call, John. Satnav's a great way of getting to somewhere by car. And if you're interested to have a similar level of accuracy and calibration when it comes to your ability to navigate through life, then you're in the right place. <sighs> and it's funny, I came up with the name for this program like a year ago or 15 months ago or whatever, and I wrote some blurb for it. And the, the blurb said something along the lines of how to navigate in times of uncertainty and change and complexity when you're headed into the unknown. I thought, yeah, that's, that's compelling copy, and that's something people will be able to identify with, and something you know we all sometimes have challenges with. So it's about yeah, navigating in the unknown and uncertainty when your old maps aren't, you know, aren't, are no longer fit for purpose. Well, in the last two months, I've, and this wasn't planned 15 months ago, but in the last two months, I've sold my business, sold my house, uh, got a book deal, uh, decided to pause the inner, uh, to finish the Inner Circle prog program after June of next year. And so I'm in the unknown in terms of what's next. What am I going to be doing? What's coming down the pike? How am I going to continue to serve people? How, what form is that going to take? And my knee-jerk response, my conditioned response, when facing the unknown for more than about four minutes is to reach for something I already know and say, well, I'll just do more of that. Anyone else do that? Or, or, or do you guys tend to just hang out in, in not knowing and just wait for the next thing to come? Yeah, isn't it interesting how, often, how we've somehow been taught to be you know, I, I don't know. Well, see, in some ways, like if you think of the, the world of nature, if you look at a cat, what a cat does when it enters a room it's never been in before, it slows down. It pricks up its ears, puts all its senses on a, alert, and it moves slowly around the room because it doesn't know whether it's safe or dangerous. It doesn't know the terrain. It's a new space. It's new territory. And as soon as it gets comfortable with it, as soon as it's like, okay, I, I'm, I, I know where, where I am, then it goes back up to regular speed and does all the things a cat does. Well, somewhere, so the mistake that's been made somewhere along the way is that people have taken that sense of the unknown and connected it to danger. And the thing is, the unknown isn't dangerous in its own right. You don't know. You don't know. It might be. See, the unknown is the domain of opportunities and threats. You know, if you think like thousands of years ago, we spent all our time closely connected to the tribe, sitting around the campfire for six hours a day, well, six hours a night. And most people never went more than a few miles from where they were born. Who's, like, of you guys, who's traveled to at least one other country in your life? 
OK, all of you. Who's traveled to two or more countries? All of you. Who's traveled to five or more countries? Mo all of you. Who's traveled to 10 or more countries? Most of you. Who's traveled to 20 or more countries? About a third of you, maybe even a half, about a third of you. Now, 200 years ago, if I, when I, if I were to ask the question, who's traveled to one or more countries, maybe one of you, if we were lucky, would put up your hand. Most of you would only be here because you lived within three miles of Heathrow. And so this happened to be on your radar. So the world we live in today is one where we're already much more comfortable with traveling into the unknown. So good for you. So anyway, yeah, somewhere along the way, that idea of the unknown got anchored to danger for a lot of people. They got connected together. And what I want to do this weekend, one of the things I want to do is tear those apart and say they're completely different. 